European Parliament in Brussels and welcome to the Record Europe. On the programme this week, Europe's common fisheries policy is for many the symbol of everything that's wrong with the EU. It's wasteful and inefficient. But here in Brussels, they say that radical reform is on its way. We'll be asking what will that amount to and who will it benefit? Well, as we've heard, the European Parliament now has meaningful power uh, to affect the shape of this future legislation. And I'm joined by four MEPs to talk about how they'd like to see that happen. Um, Ian Hudgeton from the Scottish National Party, who's on the uh, Fisheries Committee. Uh, we have Isabella Löwin, who is a Swedish MEP from the Green Party and speaks for the Green Group on uh, fisheries matters and of course has written a rather famous book in Sweden anyway about the issue. Um, John Bufton, who is from the UK Independence Party from Wales and of course UK Independence Party uh, traditionally has had a big, uh, a big uh, say and a big uh, standing in these fisheries communities in Britain. Um, we also have uh, Kriton Arsenis, who is a new Greek MEP from the Greek Socialist Party, also on the Fisheries Committee. Can you be more guided by the science? Now, John, your party, the UK Independence Party, has been attacking the common fisheries policy for years, so you should be pretty happy it's about to be reformed. Well, there's a few things I'd like to say, really, and a couple of points already mentioned. Um, the, when the common fisheries policy came through, we were absolutely right, and we, we highlighted the fact about the uh, nightmare scenarios it would bring for many fishermen. If you look at the British fleet, we've lost thousands upon thousands of jobs. The industry is in tatters now because of this policy. Um, well, it's also because it's been overfishing. Well, no, hang on a second, because when w when this uh, wonderful European Parliament decides to bring things in, one size fits all, they come across, they've ruined our industry, and if you look about sustainability, which they talk about, dumping fish back into the sea now, which have which been caught, perfectly healthy fish for the table, tip back in, that's not sustainability. Well, it's not the European Parliament's fault, because they've had no power right, yet. But, yeah, we say that, but it's, it's all part of the same project, in a sense, and if you, one, one thing I'd like to mention as well, but the new commissioner has come in, uh, Mr. Demanansky, or Demanki, whatever her name is, she um, stated actually in the hearings that um, was one area at the moment we've, which we haven't had much uh, problem with really, that's, that's to do with recreational sea angling. Um, she was asked a question in the hearings about whether she would regulate for that, she said no. A week or so late if she brought it up, but she would be bringing the regulation. So the problem is with that, what we're okay, seeing now, that area there will be one industry which is still surviving in, in Britain, um, which will be affected by, by this woman because if the regulation comes in, every uh, individual's going to go fishing, whether on boats or for recreational purposes or from the shore, but there they, will will be hit, they, the will be, they will be hit with paperwork. But reform is and on the table. Reform well. is on the table, and surely if that involves more de devolution to local associations, well, that must be a good thing. It's been on the table for 20 years. I just don't trust the word they say. Mm -hmm. I mean, those that can demonstrate that they fish in the most sustainable ma manner, mm -hmm. in, a, in an environmental aspect, and also, I think, in, an, in a social uh, environment but as well. Principles. If you look at the EU now, what they're doing with third countries, they've gone into, they're fishing off Western Sahara, a country yeah. that had been taken over by Morocco in 1970. There's many people there living out uh, in awful conditions, and yet we're quite happy the EU, with their principles, to send boats in there, take their fish away. They go down to West Africa, they're taking fish from poor people. Poor uh, people that need fish to live on. They're, they're living hand to mouth. And yet the EU, under their wonderful plan, they take over. They tried to go into Canada, but they were stopped. Well, one of the issues you know? is actually I under... under. I, I just feel that the, the EU is all they're concerned about is looking after certain individual member states. And it's a typical example of that, as I just mentioned, they go into third countries. Um, it, it's, it's a moral issue here, and I believe the EU has got the moral... You must contact. presumably, John, uh, given you represent uh, fishing communities in Wales. Now, you must be pleased, as an elected representative, you now, under the Lisbon Treaty, have the power to actually represent those people. Indeed. In a meaningful way. Sure, I'll do that, of course. Okay, so you it. support that change no, under well, the Lisbon Treaty? The, the whole issue, as far as we're concerned, is we want to take the UK out of this European Union. Yeah, but until you, you do, that, until you do, we'll, are fight, you... we'll fight at every corner we can. But we, we must highlight the fact about the, the destruction of the fishing industry in the UK, including Wales. And again, I go back to the, the angling side, that'll ruin our tourism, the tourism industry in Wales as well. Is so it, they're all affected by is this. Is it really the fault of the common fisheries policy that these communities are struggling in the way they are? Because they are, undoubtedly. I think part of it is because uh, because when you enter the European Union, then uh, all of a sudden all these subsidies are around, and uh, I, I know for sure that for in Sweden, for instance, there were were given subsidies for scrapping old boats, giving subsidies for big, building new boats, and now there's new subsidies for scrapping the new boats that were built instead of the old boats because now we have a capacity. So I think that's a structural problem, and I want to say that you probably misunderstood me. I said that the EU should have 
principles in the future common fisheries policy to safeguard that all on the regional level that we apply all of these principles. And I totally agree with you about the fisheries so-called partnerships agreements that the European Union has with third world countries, that they should be sustainable if it's possible. But right now they're absolutely not, and we're not applying all those principles that, that we should okay. uh, respect the human rights and so on. Okay. Okay. John, very